pizza made with 7-Up. Okay, well now that I've got your attention, what the hell is Montreal pizza anyway? Okay, you've got to hear me out on this one. As odd as it might sound, this comes from the land that brought us amazing culinary delights like poutine or poutine. And this is an old school OG Montreal pizza recipe. And we're gonna make it right now. So, roll the intro. everybody and welcome back to Eat the World. I'm Chef Alex Lazic and today we're going back to my hometown and we're going to make Montreal pizza. So I was born and grew up in Montreal. And Montreal is an amazing food city. Seriously, it has a real old world kind of feel to it. There's French, Italian, English, Irish, Greek. In fact, Montreal has one of the largest Greek populations outside of Greece in the world. All of these immigrants came to Canada in search of a better life and they brought a lot of their culinary traditions with them. Underpinning all this, Quebec was settled by the people of northern France who quickly were exposed to the traditions of the First Nations around them. So fast forward to a post-war Canada in the province of Quebec where cheap, filling, locally made comfort food like poutine is assimilated with the new immigrants and then we have a whole hybrid culture of food in Montreal. Now, a Montreal pizza definitely has its roots in Greece and Italy and a classic Montreal pizza is called an all-dressed pizza. It has a slightly thicker crust than a New York pizza and it's got tomato sauce, mushrooms on the bottom, pepperoni, cheese, and then green peppers on top. The further you go outside Montreal, the more this changes slightly. Two hours drive away in Ottawa, this pizza is called a combination pizza, and it's got a totally different crust and cheese structure altogether. But I'm gonna make for you the original Montreal all-dressed pizza. This recipe is at least 50 years old and was used in my family restaurant when I was just a little kid. So there's a lot of history here, and yes, 7up does go in it. Now before we begin, guys, if you could please hit that subscribe button, like, comment, do all those wonderful things, that really is a big help for me. And also please consider checking out my Patreon page. For a couple of dollars you guys can really support me and it goes a long way in helping me grow and develop my channel. But let's get started. Okay, so our first up, we're going to autolyze our dough, our flour. So we've got 500 mils of water here and we've got five grams of our sugar. Full recipe will be on my website, but let's just give that, we'll dissolve the sugar into this hot water, or as hot as it'll come out of your tap. Just dissolve that in there, and then in it goes into our mixer. Now I'm using a mixer because, well, I have one. Um, you can easily do this by hand. I'm just lazy and I don't have a lot of space, so I'm gonna stick with my mixer instead of getting everything messy everywhere else because I have a few things on the go. So, we're just gonna give this a quick mix so it's mostly incorporated. You see how that just breaks apart? There's no gluten structure in it very much at all. We're just gonna cover this up well so it doesn't dry out. And in 20 minutes, we'll come back to it and uh, we'll continue on making our dough. Okay, so 20 minutes later, and you can see how Autolys is helping our gluten develop already. You know, it's definitely a bit stretchier than it was. And that's from letting it rest for a little bit. So that's what one important step in making any dough is, is the Autolys. Next, we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. Very simple process, this one. This isn't a very complicated recipe. Our sugar's already in there. We're going to add 20 grams of salt. We're going to start mixing that. And then we're going to add our rehydrated yeast. And then our secret ingredient is a 7-Up. We've got about 150 mils of this to uh, add. In goes our 7-Up. And 
little by little until it's fully absorbed. Okay, so my thoughts on the 7-Up. Well, I know that this dough is a really fantastic recipe and when it's used in several successful restaurants, so there is something there. I know that the purists will be losing their mind, but fundamentally this is adding CO2 to the dough, which should make it lighter and crispier, add a depth of flavor, and some sugar content which will help the yeast develop. Will the CO2 actually dissipate or be retained in the dough? That's debatable. Whatever is going on, this recipe has an amazing flavor and texture, so I do firmly believe there is something in it. Now the dough's looking nice and uniform now, so we're gonna add our 20 mils of oil. Let's have a look at our dough. Just tore a little bit there. So we're just going to give it another minute of mixing. That looks pretty good to me. It's nice and smooth. It's nice and stretchy. Passes the window pane test for me. So we're going to flip this out and give it a few folds. Kind of feels like I'm going back in time because I haven't made this dough in like decades. Let's give it a few folds. And add to that structure and build that nice beautiful texture on the outside I don't know if you can see that but it's already looking better once it's come out of the mixture mixer apparently so I'm just gonna give it a bit of a, a tighten up here and we are going to put this beautiful dough back in our mixing bowl. We're gonna let it rise till it's almost double and then we're gonna stick it in the fridge overnight. So good night little dough, we'll see you in the morning. Here we go, next morning. Look at this beautiful dough. It was very active last night as you can see. But there's something, like I haven't made this recipe in years, but there's something about it. It's like seeing an old friend. Like, there's, it definitely has its own unique characteristic and personality. It's kind of cool. So anyways, we're going to divide this dough up now and um, ball it up for our pizzas. Yeah, I always do like one kilo batches of dough because that's just what I do because the dough never goes to waste. I'm actually using this recipe for another video as well. So I'm going to make our Montreal pizza right now and then I'm using the rest of this for another video which you guys should stay tuned for. So. 450 I'm gonna do some 14 inch pizzas and 250 for our 10 to 12 inch ones so again this is how I shape my dough I like to fold it over create a bit of structure as you've seen me do probably a million times if you've seen any of my videos and then we'll just create some surface tension by rolling it towards us and then we have a beautiful dough ball you can if you want just pinch it closed on the bottom just to make sure now <clears throat> this extra little piece of dough here you might be wondering what I'm gonna do with that I'm gonna use this for something else and all will be revealed shortly now we're gonna leave this at room temperature covered and um, once this has risen a little bit and the dough is warmed up and ready to bake we're gonna get to it in the meantime we're gonna prep our mushrooms and green peppers it's essential to get them as thin as possible I love using my Serbian chef's knife on tasks like this. You can really get your veggies super thin, it's razor sharp and it has great weight behind it to get nice concise cuts. I'll put a link below if you haven't seen my review of the Serbian chef's knife, have a look at it, it's pretty cool and they're pretty inexpensive. First we'll start with our wood fired version, but make sure you check out my home oven 14 inch version and I'll reveal what happens to that spare dough ball. So dust both sides well and use your own method to open it up. There's a million ways to do this, so don't feel you need to imitate the pros. Do what works for you. Give your peel a light dusting. I like to build my pizza on the peel. So do your final shave, then saucer up, and leave a nice crust or cornicione. Nice thin layer of mushrooms. Super thin mushrooms. And pepperoni. This is the wider style of pepperoni. Now, not all Montreal pizza has this, but my favorite place, Molina's, um, which doesn't exist anymore, this is the style of pepperoni they use. It goes on top of the mushrooms, 
And then our green peppers always go on top. There you go, that's a Montreal pizza. Let's give it a shake. Not going anywhere. I mean it is going everywhere. Nice and nice and slippery. So we're gonna go stick this into our pizza oven now. I'll tell you what, we picked a gorgeous day for it. So get your oven fired up. They're all different, but I'd recommend a medium high heat as the base is slightly thicker and we want this to cook up well from the bottom. A few turns and our pizza is looking marvelous. And out she comes, our wood-fired Montreal pizza. Here we go guys, here is our wood-fired Montreal pizza. I just wanted to show you that it can be done in the uni. I just wanted to, out of curiosity, I just wanted to see how the dough would turn out in, uh, in a wood-burning oven. So, here we go. This, honestly, this is like brings back so many memories. This is Montreal pizza to me. Like the smell, it's just this is just this is what I grew up on. So our wood-fired Montreal pizza. It's pretty awesome. This smells like home to me. This is what I grew up with. So, let's have a taste. I'm uh, I'm really kind of pleased with that puff and that crust. It's pretty good. You know, the proof is in the crust with uh, a bit of 7-Up. <coughs> it goes a long way. That's Montreal pizza. It tastes like home. It tastes like my childhood. This is the kind of pizza I grew up on. So, now we're gonna make a 12-inch version and I wanna show you why. This is kinda cool. It's a very unique Montreal thing. I've never seen this anywhere else. Now for a home oven version, we're going to use a 14, not a 12 inch screen. These are great for the home oven, but you can also use a standard pizza pan. Crank your oven up as hot as it will go. I'm using a motor home oven with a pizza stone, which surprisingly works well. Make sure you spray your brush your screen with oil, and let's get our pizza ready the same way we did the smaller one. Okay, so, the reason I wanted to make this pizza to show you, is I wanted to show you something that I've only ever seen in Montreal. Maybe it happens elsewhere, I'm sure it probably does. but. These days, you ever get that little plastic thing in the middle of the pizza? I think it's called the pizza saver. Well, in Montreal, they don't use those, or maybe some places do now. But back in the day, they put an extra little ball of dough right in the middle, and that would act as the pizza saver to stop the box sticking to the pizza. I think that's a way better, more environmentally friendly and delicious way of using a pizza saver. My brother and I used to fight over it, because who doesn't want a delicious ball of dough? And in she goes. Make sure you turn it a few times to make sure it's cooking evenly. Magnificent. That is a Montreal pizza, if ever I saw one. Look at that. This is a Montreal all-dressed pizza. And like I said, that little dough ball, that was the, the prized treasure that used to be fought for. Um, instead of using, like I said, instead of using the little plastic pizza saver, they used a dough ball because, well, that's what they had. And honestly, I still think this is a much better idea than uh, chucking a piece of throwaway plastic on your pizza. So, my old school Montreal pizza. Those are the flavors of my childhood. And the smells as well. Beautiful. I am so glad I did this. And what's really interesting is that crust, you know, it's got this it's got the seven up in it, but it's not it's just made it a bit lighter and crispier, I think. Maybe that's my imagination. But when we made the it in the wood for wood burning oven, I was quite surprised at the puff we got out of this dough. It's pretty impressive. Obviously with the motorhome oven, it didn't come out as fluffy, but it's still it's still a nice light dough, and it's not sweet like you'd expect it to be kind of sweet. But this, this isn't. This is a really sound, lovely pizza. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with how this crust comes out. I guess that's why <laughs> it was so successful and, um, and it's still being used to this day. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was probably a bit of a surprising episode using 7-Up in a pizza dough, and the results were pretty... Pretty spectacular, I think. Like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm 
I'm kind of amazed at, after all these years how good that recipe still is and it's it's good it's really sound I'm gonna tidy up look out for part two when I'll be recreating a Montreal style dish and probably Canada's most shameful food so check that out so guys thanks for watching like subscribe do all that stuff I think this is definitely worth a like and a subscribe but thanks so much if you uh, if you do feel that way inclined also again Please check out my Patreon page. I would be most grateful of you if you did. There's behind the scenes footage for my patrons as well as I will be debuting some new recipes and, and other recipes that won't make it to YouTube will be on the uh, Patreon page. So please, if you could, I would really appreciate that. Anyways, thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed.